Hey there everybody, this is Matthew Naiman with Shutterstock.com and today we're taking a look at Collider. Collider is a collection of over 150 visual effects elements captured optically in 4K. Elements from Collider are compatible with just about any nonlinear editing system out there, but today we're going to take a look at Collider in Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. So let's get started. Here we are in Adobe After Effects, and today we're going to be working with this stock footage shot of a brooding man walking down an alleyway in, uh, oh, I don't know, it looks like somewhere in Europe. Somewhere nicer than where I am right now. Uh, when I'm looking at this shot, I see that we have a moving shot. Looks like it's going to need some motion tracking. And I also think that this shot would look a little bit nicer with some atmospheric dust. Maybe, uh, maybe a storm just ended and kicked up some dirt and debris around. Maybe just the lights are casting a, a little bit of some backlight on some dust in the air or some pollen because it's springtime. Might look nice, so let's go with that. So the first thing we're probably going to want to do is establish a motion track. So uh, we're trying to look for a small high contrast area that After Effects Tracker will enjoy grabbing onto. Uh, why don't we maybe go for this small blue light here? Uh, looks like he only occludes it for a second and we can probably jump the track around to get around that. Uh, maybe the lights on this side would work, but they might be a bit big and diffuse for us, so uh, why don't we try that one there? I'm going to grab our track motion button, and I'm going to build a little tracker, and I'm going to drag it around that circle. I'm also going to keep the search area pretty small because the camera movement is pretty minimal, and then I'm just going to run the track until it doesn't run anymore. There you go, I'm going to manually stop it there because he's about to occlude it. Then I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key, grab within our tracking feature, and let's just drag over maybe to one of these little circles on the car for a second, just to get the track through him blocking our original track. Now you can see that wasn't a great selection of a second track point because our crosshair feature has shifted off there. I think I need to grab something that's more within the same plane of motion as that dot. So why don't we uh, maybe jump up to the top of this for a few frames. There you go. You can see now that that track point is clear again, we're still in just about the same spot, which means I'm free to hold Option or Alt, drag back down to our original point, and continue tracking. There you go. I'm going to go to New Layer, Null Object, and we're going to call this guy Track Null. Jump over to our tracker, Edit Target, Track Null, OK, and Apply. Now when we scrub through our clip, you should see that that Null right there sticks beautifully to our track point. Excellent. We're now going to go find our dust element. I quite liked Collider Particles Dust Bubbles 03. I thought it was a nice fit, so let's drop it down on top. And as you can see, we sort of have a nice variety of particle sizes, some out of focus, some a little bit uh, further back, more in focus. I'm going to change the blending mode of this to screen, which knocks out the darker parts and keeps the lighter parts. And then let's just track it to our null and scale it up a little bit so that we don't catch the edges of it. You'll see that it tracks nicely, but it's doing a little bit too much to the color and contrast of our final shot. So the way around that is to grab our particle la layer, grab our particle layer, go to Effects, Color Correction, Curves, and let's drag down the darkest parts and then bump the really bright stuff back up. So that should knock out just about everything but keep the particles without affecting the color and contrast of our shot. I think it's nice. Looks like it's just starting to snow. I'm a fan. So, why don't we jump over to Adobe Premiere Pro and take a look at how we can use some Collider elements in that piece of software. All right, everybody, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, and we're going to take a look at how to use some Collider assets in this piece of software. So here we have uh, this clip of a fire eater uh, at some festival, blowing fire. Very, very, very cool. But I thought it would look kind of neat if we imagined that the camera person was a little bit closer and there's a little bit more foreground action going on because everything is kind of nested back a few feet from the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our Collider assets and we're going to grab Collider Sparks Smoke 08 and drop it on top. Let's take a look at what this clip looks like. Uh, as you can see, I also have to uh, scale the footage down because everything in Collider is shot in 4K and we're working in a 1080p timeline. So here we have an awesome package with some sparks and some smoke coming up. 
So I'm just going to trim our footage to match and we're going to scale it up a little bit. And then we're going to set our blending mode to screen so that it lays on top of our other footage. But you're going to notice one small problem. Our footage has a camera move in it. The camera's kind of handheld and moving around and it shows up that we're just using an overlay effect that those sparks weren't there in real life. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a real quick and dirty motion track in Adobe Premiere manually. In Collider, I'm going to go to the Motion panel uh, and uh, click on the little wireframe icon next to the word Motion. And then if I jump back so I can see this wider, you can see the outline of the entire Collider plate, which is nice because it lets us move around that footage in the frame and make sure that it stays completely contained. Uh, what we can do is, uh, I'm just going to jump back to Fit, this little circle represents the anchor point of the footage, meaning, you know, if I rotate it, the footage rotates around that anchor point. I'm going to use this anchor point as a way to cheat a motion track in Adobe Premiere. I'm going to grab the anchor point. Uh, well, first, actually, I'm going to put the footage where I want it. So I probably want it, you know, close to the bottom of the edge of frame, but not exactly there. I'm going to grab our anchor point, and I'm going to find a point that I can track throughout the footage. So looking at this, uh, this little girl sitting here in a pink shirt is, uh, is pretty solid and easy to see. So I'm just going to drop the anchor point right on her face, drop a position keyframe, and then I'm going to zoom in, and uh, let's do a little bit of manual motion tracking. I'm going to make sure that I have my wireframe activated, and I'm going to use the arrow keys to jump forward maybe two frames at a time. And I'm going to continually move this plate to keep the anchor point right on that person's head. But for the sake of everyone watching, I'm going to hit the fast forward button now, so see you in a minute. Alright, well that wasn't so bad, the things I do for you people. So now when I hit play, you can see that our shot is motion tracked to our original footage. I think it improves the shot a lot, and really didn't take too much time. Why don't we jump over to Final Cut Pro? I'll see you guys there. All right, everybody, here we are in Final Cut Pro, and we're going to take a look at how to use a couple of collider plates to amp up this concert footage. So as you can see, it looks like everybody's having a good time. It's a party. People are jumping up and down and clapping. Woo, it's a party. We're going to want to add just a little bit of foreground stuff to make this footage look a little bit less antiseptic. To me, it looks a little bit staged, sort of for the purposes of stock footage. Um, so why don't, we, uh, why don't we try and amp it up a little bit with some stuff from the Collider pack? I think uh, the stuff from Collider that might look really nice here is some of the confetti. So I'm actually going to grab uh, Collider Confetti 29 and drop it on top. And we're just going to go ahead and change blend mode to screen. Let's have a look at that. You can see immediately it adds sort of a slightly analog value to this, a little bit more realism. But I think we can uh, jump back into our pack, grab a Collider Flares 04. Everything's a little bit more in focus. Why don't we actually switch the stacking order of those? I'm going to jump down to our effects, uh, go down to our blurs, and let's just grab a Gaussian blur and throw it on our top layer, just so that we can kind of uh, fake a little bit of a depth of field effect on it. And jump down to our second layer, change blending mode to screen, and that should give us two distinct layers of confetti going on in our clip. There you go. Immediately it looks like this party was a whole lot more fun for everyone involved. Well, that's it for me today. For more great stock footage, VFX plates, and tutorials like this one, be sure to visit Shutterstock.com. I'm Matthew Naiman, and I will be seeing you guys next time.